Good evening. The July 13, 2023 meeting of the Woodbridge Township Board of Education will now come to order. Roll call, Mr. Secretary. Ms. Anderson. Here. Mr. Delapetro. Here. Mr. Harris. Here. Mr. Trebowasser. Here. And Mr. Molnar. Here. Mr. Secretary, as required by the Sunshine Law, please read the notice of meetings. Thank you, Mr. President. The New Jersey Open Public Meetings Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interest is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this act, the Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published by having the date, time, and place thereof posted as follows. On January 11th, 2023, emailed to the Home News Tribune, the Star Ledger, and the Municipal Clerk's Office posted in Ross Street School Number 11 and the Board of Education Administration Building, also published on the School District website. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Vice President Harris, please read the closed session statement. Thank you, Mr. President. In compliance with the Sunshine Law, the board must go into closed session in order to discuss subjects exempted from the public portion of our meeting. The discussions to be held in closed session will be regarding personnel matters, and the board will receive attorney-client privilege. In addition, the board will discuss negotiations with the WTEA and WTSAA related to a sidebar agreement. Any information regarding the closed session discussion will be released to the public when the reasons for discussing these matters in closed session no longer exist. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Just to let the record show, Board Member Perez is present. We have a motion by Mr. Harris. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. DeLapetro. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The Board will now retire into closed session. Please rise for a salute to the flag in a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do I have a motion to reconvene? So motion. Have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. The motion in the second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Roll call, Mr. Secretary. Ms. Anderson. Here. Ms. Bourdain. Here. Mr. Del Petro. Here. Mr. Harris. Here. Ms. Perez. Here. Mr. Trebowasser. Here. Mr. Molnar. Here. Mr. Secretary, please state for the record any notices of bids received. Thank you, Mr. President. No bids were solicited. Thank you. Dr. Massimino, please stay for the record the superintendent's reports for the month of June 2023. Mr. President, I submit the student registers and fire drill reports, suspension reports for elementary and secondary schools, bomb threat reports, and reports to the attendance officers. Thank you. The Woodbridge Township Board of Education welcomes and encourages active, productive, and respectful participation by members of the public and seeks to protect the First Amendment rights of those engaging in the exercise of free speech at this Board of Education meeting. Members of the public are requested to express themselves in a civil manner with due respect for the dignity and privacy of those whose legal rights may be impacted. The public is now invited to speak regarding the agenda items being presented this evening only. When you come up to the microphone, please provide your name and the section of the township in which you reside, along with the specific agenda and item number you wish to discuss. As per Regulation 1100D, comments must be limited to no more than five minutes. No response will be given until you've completed your opportunity to speak. Anybody have any questions about tonight's agenda items? Seeing none. Superintendent's agenda. Dr. Massimino, do you have any recommendations? Yes, Mr. President, I have 13 items to present to the board. Thank you. Do I have a motion for the superintendent's no agenda? Motion. motion by Mr. Trebosser. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Perez. Are there any comments or questions from the board? Roll call, Mr. Secretary. Ms. Anderson. Yes. Ms. Bourdain. Yes. Mr. Delapetro. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. Ms. Perez. Mr. President, I abstain on items 8, 9, and number 13 in the name of Rutgers. Yes to all other items. Mr. Trebowasser. Yes. And Mr. Molnar. Yes. Policy and Planning, Mr. Harris. Thank you, Mr. President. The Policy and Planning Committee on recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools presents the following two items. I move for the adoption of the foregoing. Thank you. I have a motion by Mr. Harris. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Anderson. Are there any comments or questions from the board? 
Roll call, Mr. Secretary. Ms. Anderson. Yes. Ms. Bourdain. Yes. Mr. Delapetro. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. Ms. Perez. Yes. Mr. Trebosser. Yes. Mr. Molnar. Yes. Curriculum agenda, Mr. Trebosser. Thank you, Mr. President. The Curriculum Committee on Recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools and the Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction presents the following night items. I move for the adoption of the foregoing. Thank you. Have a motion by Mr. Trebosser. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Ms. Bourdain. Are there any comments or questions from the board? Roll call, Mr. Secretary. Ms. Anderson? Yes. Ms. Bourdain? Yes. Mr. Delapetro? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Ms. Perez? Yes. Mr. Trebowasser? Yes. And Mr. Molnar? Oh. Yes. Finance and Insurance Agenda, Mr. Trebowasser. Thank you, Mr. President. The Finance and Insurance Committee on recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools and the Business Administrator Board Secretary presents the following 14 items. I move for the adoption of the foregoing. Thank you. Have a motion by Mr. Trebosser. Is there a second? Second. Second, second by Mr. Delapetro. Do I have any comments or questions from the board? Roll call, Mr. Secretary. Ms. Anderson. Yes. Ms. Bourdain. Yes. Mr. Delapetro. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. Ms. Perez. Yes. Mr. Trebosser. Yes. Mr. Molnar. Yes. Athletics and Extracurricular, Ms. Anderson. Thank you, Mr. President. The Athletics and Extracurricular Committee on the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools and the Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction presents the following 11 items. I move for the adoption of the foregoing. Thank you. I have a motion by Ms. Anderson. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Perez. Are there any comments or questions from the board? Roll call, Mr. Secretary. Ms. Anderson. Yes. Ms. Bourdain. Yes. Mr. Delapetro. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. Ms. Perez. Yes. Mr. Trebosser. Yes. Mr. Molnar. Yes. Buildings and Grounds Agenda, Mr. Harris. Thank you, Mr. President. The Buildings and Grounds Committee on recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools and Assistant Business, excuse me, a Business Administrator present the following nine items. I move for the adoption of the foregoing. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Do I have a second? Second. Second, second by Mr. Trubwasser. Are there any comments or questions from the board? Roll call, Mr. Secretary. Ms. Anderson. Yes. Ms. Bourdain. Yes. Mr. Delapetro. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. Ms. Perez. Yes. Mr. Trebosser. Yes. And Mr. Molnar. Yes. Transportation agenda, Mr. Delapetro. Thank you, Mr. President. The Transportation Committee on recommendation, recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools and the Business Administrator Board Secretary present the following nine items. I move for the adoption of the foregoing. Thank you. I have a motion by Mr. Delapetro. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Ms. Anderson. Are there any comments or questions from the board? Roll call, Mr. Secretary. Ms. Anderson. Yes. Ms. Bourdain. Yes. Mr. Delapetro. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. Ms. Perez. Yes. Mr. Trebowasser. Yes. Mr. Molnar. Yes. Personnel agenda, Mr. Harris. Thank you, Mr. President. The policy, excuse me, wow, I'm, I'm off today. The Personnel Committee on Recommendation of the Superintendent and Assistant Superintendent for Human Resources present the following 41 items. I move for the adoption of the foregoing. Thank you. I have a motion by Mr. Harris. Is there a second? Second. Second. Seconded by Ms. Bourdain. Are there any comments or questions from the board? Roll call, Mr. Secretary. Uh, Mr. President, before we do roll call, I think uh, uh, Ms. Blackburn has something oh. to add. Yeah, I didn't know if you wanted me to add it or wait till the legal section, so I will um, add uh, item number 42 to the personnel agenda resolved the following a grievance hearing on July 13th, 2023. The Woodbridge Township Board of Education hereby denies grievance number A-23-02. Thank you. Okay, now we can do our roll call. Ms. Anderson? Yes. Ms. Bourdain? Yes. Mr. Delapetro? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Ms. Perez? Yes. Mr. Trebosser? I'll be abstaining on item number nine in the name of Leah Henderson. Yes on all other items. And Mr. Molnar. On item number eight, I'm going to vote no on the name Christine Lewis. Uh, nothing against the individual. I've kind of always wanted to see these positions filled from within our district. Um, so I'll be voting no on that name. Yes on all other items. Thank you. Just for the record, it is 42 items now that that's been added. Do we have to do another motion since the... Do we have to move it again? I, I would recommend it just to be safe. Okay. Mr. Harris, personnel. Sure. <laughs> Uh, on behalf of the personnel committee, uh, on recommendation of the superintendent of schools and assistant business, excuse me, assistant superintendent for human resources present the following 42 items. I move the adoption of the foregoing. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Bourdain. Any comments or questions from the board? 
Roll call, Mr. Secretary. Sure. Ms. Anderson? Yes. Ms. Bourdain? Yes. Mr. Delapetro? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Ms. Perez? Yes. Mr. Trebowasser? Uh, I abstain in the name of Leah Henderson on item number nine, yes, on all other items. And Mr. Molnar? On item number eight, I'll be voting no on the name Christine Lewis for the reasons I gave a moment ago, yes, on all other items. Madam Attorney, do you have any recommendations this evening? Not this evening, sir. Is there any old business that should be brought to the attention of the board? Is there any new business? Mr. Molnar? Mr. I Harris? I want to recognize, or President Molnar, I want to recognize uh, an upcoming event here in the district uh, has a tangential uh, connection to our district. Uh, yearly, each summer, there's a Woodbridge Community Players performance put on by the organization Woodbridge Community Players, typically made up of graduates of our district, but also now it includes adults uh, putting on a, a summer play, for lack of a better term. Uh, they've done an outstanding job over the years, and I'm sure this year's show will be no different. So coming up this summer is Rent. Uh, that will be uh, premiering at Woodbridge, the Woodbridge Middle School Theater, located on uh, Barron Avenue here in Woodbridge, not far from here, on the dates of July 27th through July 29th. Those shows begin at 7.30 p.m. And then the Sunday, uh, the, the final show is on July the 30th uh, at 2 p.m. So once again, that's the Woodbridge Community Players performance of Rent, uh, running from the days of July 27th through July 30. You can purchase tickets or learn more through their Facebook page, uh, facebook.com you know, backslash Woodbridge Community Players. Enjoy the show and uh, to the performance break a leg. Thank you, Mr. Molnar. Thank you, Mr. Harris. That is a very talented group of young men and women, and uh, it's well worth the, going out to see the performance. Before I open the meeting to public comment, oh, Mr. Mr. Harris, Mr. would you? Oh, Mr. Del Pietro? Yeah, I just got just just a couple of things. I'll be real quick. Oh no, it's okay. Okay. Um, with school 14 going over to 25, I'd just like to thank the administration for getting out ahead of um, working on the uh, traffic plan and work with PD. Um, if we anticipate any, any any problems, you know, for getting out ahead of that. So. Just like to thank you for that. And I, um, my last thing is I'd like to recognize the, um, our county superintendent, Kyle Anderson. Um, back in May, uh, he was on his way home from work <clears throat> and um, came upon a house fire and rescued the occupant. Um, had he not been there with the Edison police officer, the outcome would have been a lot different. So I'd just like to recognize him uh, for going uh, above and beyond and saving that resident's life. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Del Petro. Also, too, when we were talking about life saving, the uh, school nurse over at Island Middle School, you know, um, and I'm sure we're going to be with Weber. We're going to wind up doing something for her, for coming out in the the heat of the moment and, and working on Mr. Baumgartner, you know, a victim of the lightning strike. So, a lot of heroic people here in Woodbridge. Absolutely. Are there any other new business? Okay, like as I mentioned, before I open the public for public comment, Mr. Harris, you'd like to say something? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Molnar. Before we open tonight's public comment period, I wish to make a statement. Over the past several months, this board has heard a series of outlandish accusations ranging from curriculum exciting and normalizing pedophilia to serialization to the district and our education professionals profiting from the pharmaceuticals industry for for the push for child sex changes. My colleagues and I have sat here quietly, generally stunned, simply not knowing where to begin. I'm afraid that our silence may give the public the wrong impression. Or perhaps our silence validates such accusations. To my constituents, because I can't speak for the board, I am here to unequivocally denounce these baseless comments. They amount to mere fear-mongering and conspiracy th theories found in the darkest corners of the internet. Our open microphone format has given a forum to those who wish to opine on grievances of a rapidly changing world and world events, real or not real, happening beyond the borders of Woodbridge Township. If you notice, little is ever said about the agenda portion of our meetings covering curriculum, district policy, finances, and the like. Members of the public, ourselves included, are entitled to our own opinions, but we're not entitled to our own facts. The reality is simple. Most, if not all, of what we've heard in recent months concerning our health and physical education curriculum is patently false and simply not happening here in Woodbridge Township. The Woodbridge Township School District can only control 
what happens in the Woodbridge Township School District. Period, full stop. We're told to knock it off, to stop it. Enough is enough. We've heard accusations of experimenting on children with prescription medication, such as puberty blockers. We've heard accusations about encouraging children to change their sex or their gender. I'm setting the record straight. The district, this administration, our employees, and our employees' unions do not profit from anybody, including the pharmaceutical corporations. The aforementioned do not prescribe medication, any medication whatsoever. Our licensed, excuse me, only licensed medical doctors, physician assistants, advanced practice nurses can prescribe medication. We do not employ a single one of them. There is no district initia uh, initiated experimentation with any drugs on any student. Any student taking a prescribed, o prescribed or over-the-counter medication is getting it from home or their licensed healthcare professional. It was suggested that we're pushing sex education on our kindergartners. Foremost, sex education is not a thing. It's common parlance for our health and physical education curriculum. Secondly, sex is not being taught to kindergartners. Here's what they're learning. They're discussing how individuals make their own choices about how to express themselves, explain healthy ways for friends to express feelings for and one another. They demonstrate healthy ways to respond to disagreements or conflicts with others, such as talk, leave, talk to trusted adults, tell a sibling or peer. We educate them on uh, medically accurate names of body parts. And finally, we explain the ways in which parents may care for their offspring, such as animals, human beings, and fish, and so on. These curriculum standards are required by the state, must be taught between the grades kindergarten and grade two. And per my conversations with Mr. Pastorino, our assistant superintendent for curriculum, we often backload this material as late as possible, and in this case, grade two. Similarly, last meeting, it was suggested that it's a new phenomenon that fourth graders and fifth graders are being taught about puberty. We have been teaching about puberty to our fifth grade males and fourth grade females for decades, myself included, in 1997 as a fifth grader. I remember because it was awkward. <laughs> All this said about our health curriculum, our district 100% complies with the state law that allows any parent to opt their child out of any unit of the physical education and health curriculum that they so choose. This law has been on the books since 1979, and it is in force, and we comply with it. Recently, a team of board members, myself included, took the time to educate ourselves by speaking with our board attorney, Mr. Bush, who knows the issues inside and out from district level policies to state, federal law, case law, and statutory law. Before speaking or opining on the matter, we educated ourselves from the professionals who are actually in the field. All members of the public are always welcome at our meetings to say, frankly, whatever they'd like. But if I may, I'd ask that we focus, that our focus be on the issues of the day here in Woodbridge Township not a forum for grievances with other levels of government or engaging in culture wars with things simply not happening. You're entitled to do that, but I'd ask, let's keep our eye on the ball here. I challenge the public to use this time at, the, at these meetings on where we as a district can be better. That's what we should be talking about at these meetings. And finally, to our students, we see you. Keep being you. You're welcome here. Your parents and your true friends love you, no matter your similarities or your differences. Thank you all for listening. Thank you, Mr. Harris. We will now open the meeting for public comment. If you wish to say something, please come to the microphone, provide your name and the section of the township in which you reside. Again, members of the public are requested to express themselves in a civil manner with due respect for the dignity and privacy of those whose legal rights may be impacted. Please limit your comments to no more than five minutes in accordance with Regulation 1100D. No response will be given until you have fully completed your comments so as not to interrupt your five minute opportunity to speak.
John Rattati Woodbridge. Uh, 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 Mr. Harris, you said a lot of things tonight which makes good points. But you talk a lot about yourself growing up, schools, everything else. Maybe that's you're still single, right? But we talk about people that have kids. It's different. We all different religions, different nationalities, different lot of things. It's different than some of us. We all got different situations, different stories, different problems. But again, it's up to the parents. And you keep saying about state, 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 state. How come certain schools don't have, if it's state law, there should be every school, parochial, not parochial, there should be same kind of things going to schools, which is not, they don't have to do it. So whatever we do, let people do it. They don't come here, people are nervous, they're afraid, and they know, but it's gotta get off their hearts if they do nothing about it. If something happens, they're gonna feel guilty, we all would feel guilty. So they, doesn't mean they're right or wrong, but they have the right to speak. Uh, I don't want to go any further because I got five minutes. Now, school 14, uh, you're going to put all the kids in the school before uh, 25. If you close school 14 in Fords, the students going to go to school 25. Mr. Vitarik, we'll answer your questions. Do you, do you want to yeah, go okay, back and okay, forth? Okay. I don't want to take away my, from the, your my, five okay, minutes. That's, you're right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But the, again, that means if you do close school 14, you will not need a principal there, right? You will not need a vice principal there. So you could have us, all those people that were school 14, uh, the elite uh, people that are principal, vice principal, they're not going to be needed. Right? Number two. And second thing would be, uh, last meeting when I was over here, and what happened was that the, uh, Mr. Baumgartner, the guy with lightning by the school over there, and I believe Mr. Harris, you said yourself, that's the only school, and I think Mr. Moon that said, that did not have the device to monitor the light, lightning, right? There was not such a thing on the field, right? So that's again, uh, I asked the mayor about it, and insisted, even less this week meeting, there was a device on the field. I do know the junior high school and a high school had it, but the particular field did not have anything on the field. I don't blame anybody, but if, you know, you just didn't have it. Now insist that there was, and say so you heard it. Well, heard it or not heard it, was the man got hurt, and thanks God there was no any other people to be there to be hurt too. And again, I don't want to go any further, but again, I have a book over here a lady brought it to me. I came from Europe. I knew how to make bombs when I was five years old. Right, so people get killed, so people get stabbed. But nobody told us that you're gonna get hurt. And people gotta live to it, you're used to it. You don't, you don't, doesn't bother you after a while. You see somebody drop dead or something, big deal. It's not a big deal, you get used to it. But nobody told you you're gonna get hurt. And that's one thing about it. Whoever saved me, I don't know. I lost my father before I was born. And how I'm still here. Who watch over me? So this lady came up, and very simple. Said, gun hurts. I know how to make a bombs. I know how to do it, but nobody told me it could hurt you. Only thing I was told not to swim, because my father almost drowned because they got bent in a cool pool. But otherwise, nobody told me the guns hurt. And the kids don't know, when you're dead, you're dead. I believe when I was supposed to go to Vietnam, I was told about it. The average person don't think about dying at this 25 years old. So the kids that they disposable, they think guns are okay. But this book says over here simple, the guns hurt. So I would like to present it to anybody to look at it and but think about it, maybe something like that we should put into the school library or something, and teach the kids from first grade, third grade, fourth grade, by the time they're 10, 12 years old, believe me, they know it, but where the beginning? Kids like to break. If there's a gun in the house, father has it, or anybody has the big brother, they will experiment with it. And that's where danger comes. I think they should be made aware of it, the guns hurt. That's what I'm saying. Thank you.
You're, uh, okay, so um, your question, yes, the 14 students will be going to school 25. Um, the principal at 14 um, wound up getting another opening in the school district that there was an opening. Um, do you want to add yeah, anything? If I may, if I may, Mr. President, uh, every teacher, and, and quite honestly, Mr. Retire, we, this has already been done. We've moved the teachers from school 14 to fill in the classrooms as many as we could. We tried to move them all to school 25. Mm -hmm. The ones we couldn't, we made sure that they're tenured. The union president sitting right here. I'm quite certain that if we didn't move those tenured teachers, we would have had a lengthy conversation. So everybody that had to be moved was moved, and they're moving. Thank you. Uh, and there's no vice principal at school 14. Thank you. Your, your time's up, Mr. Uh, Pratire. Mr. Mulner? Oh, I, I wanted to just cover, we had talked about the, the lightning devices in yeah. the uh, Buildings and Grounds Committee, and we're, we're taking a look at any gaps that, that there may be. The mayor may have been referring to one of the devices was, was near that property between the, the football field and the baseball field, and I think as we had talked about, uh, the other day that, to our knowledge, there wasn't any prior lightning strike to, unfortunately, when that individual was struck by lightning. So it had not yet triggered the device that was a distance away. Yeah. Um, but we are going to take a look at any gaps that we may I'm have. I'm going to kind of watch what I talk about on this okay. subject because it is under investigation. Okay. So oh, okay. I, I don't want to get oh, into right. any comment until it's all well, what, what a good point. What a good, can I leave this with a young lady yes, over here? Yes, Ms. Lonnie, yep. yep. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pithar. Paul Lon, <coughs> Hope Lon. <sighs> President Biden, not too long ago, made, <coughs> made a claim our president made a claim that it's not the parents' children, it's actually the nation's children. He's made that claim repeatedly. He spoke to, uh, to uh, outstanding teachers of the year and made the claim that while, they, while you have them, they're your kids. Policy 5756, which is transgender guidance, not law, has been issued by the state and gives you latitude to decide whether you inform parents over a condition called gender dysphoria which by its nature is a, a mental, um, uh, oppressive mental condition, depending on degree, of course, and, and parents should be, we believe, uh, clued in if, if the ch child is having any kind of mental stress or distress. And then in, in your talk, Mr. Harris, you mentioned the, the phrase, and I listened carefully to everything you said, we see you. And it strikes me that you see them as they see themselves, these developing children who are going on Tumblr and going on uh, uh, TikTok and being influenced because that's what young kids are. They're influenced and they become influencer, become social contagion. So when you say we see you, you're speaking to them directly and you're still bypassing the parents who may see them differently than you do. The state and the government does not love these children. Parents love and nurture children. And children don't know what they want to be yet, let alone gender. Whether they're going to be an astronaut because they say so at eight years old, you think that that's with certainty we can rely on that? So it's very, very um, disingenuous, your, your little speech. Now, I just have a couple basic questions. Number one. Are biological boys allowed under any circumstances to use uh, little girls' rooms in any of the school district? Number two, and, and this can be elaborated next time, it was really my principal topic, what is systemic racism and do you believe it's practiced widely in the Woodbridge school system and if so, what gives you uh, uh, that impression? Third, in keeping with your suggestion, Mr. Harris, Khan Academy, which has been very helpful in a lot of school systems, now has a beta version of something called Khan Migo. And I'm wondering if anyone here has been aware of that because it could be an extraordinary help in tutoring and helping kids through the learning loss that was imposed upon them by uh, political uh, powers that be. Lastly, NJEA has a reporting tool to track parents who oppose 
age-inappropriate sexual content in schools. It's NGEA's Center for Honesty's database. Is that just a, a, a right-wing conspiracy, or is there something to that? I'm done with my questions. Yeah, Madam Attorney, do you want to take the first one? Yeah, as, as, as to the first one, um, in accordance with both state and federal law, um, and in particular, New Jersey's law against discrimination, which includes gender identity and expression, to the extent that biological boys do identify as girls, they, yes, are permitted um, to use the girls' rooms. Or they are allowed to, to use gender-neutral uh, rooms at their choice. Thank you. Um, as far as um, the racism question, I'm going to allow each individual to think of that themselves. Um, I'm not going to give you my definition of it. It's what everybody says. I mean, I've heard people say, I'm not, but. Does that but mean you are? Does that but mean you're not? So I'm not going to give my opinion of it. Nobody wants to hear my opinion of it. Um, and then your last question with the right wing conspiracy, uh, what, what were you saying? I'll repeat, NGEA has a reporting service now that if parents object to some of the extreme sexual uh, agenda and gender theory, um, that they can be reported now. They're calling it the Center for Honesty Database. Well, Maybe get, uh, Mr. Coughlin can speak to that next time in yeah, the town council. I'll have to get more information from the NGEA on that one. Okay. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is my first time I'm attending this meeting. A little nervous and shaky. I hope I'll get some solution for this. I'm a mother of two. One goes to elementary. Could you please give your name in the section of town you live? Sure. Um, my name is Kinda Patel. I'm from Colonia. My daughter goes to elementary school, Oak Ridge Heights 21. My son goes to CMS. Every year we face the issue of transportation. We are within the mile of two radio. Um, within the radius of two miles, it really doesn't make sense to us that why we are not provided with the transportation. Well, I see other kids in my cl uh, daughter's class as well as in my son's class, no special requirement or no anything else, they are provided even though we th they are within the two miles of radius. Is that your only question? I could go on and on. Well, no, you got five minutes, so okay, sure. I don't want to um, answer you and, and interrupt yeah, you. When we were in Eastland, my we were on Green Street, and he was going to school number 18, and the distance from my house in Eastland to 18 was less than two miles. It was 1.2 miles. He was provided transportation. Now we are not. So the rule of two miles of radius doesn't apply in Eastland, and it applies in Colonia. Well, it also, there's a thing called courtesy busing, where if the children have to cross, now I don't know where you live in Colonia, but if the children have to cross a main thoroughfare, then transportation is provided for the safety of the children. Um, if it's just back streets or side streets, and you're within that two miles, then you're not required to have I don't busing. think so, Wood Avenue and Inman Avenue are the side street, they're main road, and half of the Wood Avenue does not have um, walkway. I cannot let my 10 years, 11 years old or um, 5 years old to that route. It's not safety. But what we'll do, after the meeting, we'll have a conversation. We could talk your address and we could say. I'll hope for the solution to this because I'm approaching each and every year to the township for this burning issue and I'm not getting any solution to this. I'm paying right now $800 a month out of our pocket just to ride them to school. Okay. I, will, I can't promise anything, but we'll talk after the meeting and we'll get some information from you. Thank you. Okay. Is there anybody else from the public? Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Or good evening. Uh, my name is Nizam Mohammed. I'm from the Islin part of Woodbridge Township. I do have a simple question, but it might be simple. Um, when should parents expect assignments for teachers, schools, and buses? How much who is going to take that? 
Is that your only question? That's my only question. Okay, Dr. Massimino. Mr. Pastorino, uh, you good? Can you specify which which schools you're talking for for your children? Are you talking for the entire school district? The entire school district. Thank you. So, traditionally, our middle schools and our high schools would um, release that information to the families in that last week of August when the counselors return to work and the administrators have um, in the elementary schools also return to work. So it's usually the last week in August. I'm sorry, but does that give them enough time, the last week of August? You're talking about the assignments for yes. their classes, correct? Yes. Uh, I don't know what time they, they would need. That's, that's been what we've practiced for um, a considerable amount of time. Okay, just ask. Thank you. Is there anybody else from the public? Mr. Molnar? Mr. Harris? Could I just jump in? Uh, yeah. Mr. Lund, thank you for your comments on the, the Con Amiga. That sounds interesting, and we should definitely take a look into that. I, you know, I did say we, we see you. I should have used the word I. Uh, but that was to send a message to students that regardless of, you know, who you are, your background, you're welcome here. You know, there's, there's not a lot of nice things said about LGBTQ students here at this meeting, and I wanted them to know that there are people out there who support them. Uh, and, and when I referenced families, I said, your families and true friends love you no matter your similarities or differences. So I, you know, it, it, in a broad sense, I, I think of students as, as my students as well, and I, and I think any teacher would, uh, would, would say the same, but yes, they are 100% always the parents' students, but we look after them and are privileged and, and proud to, uh, to be their, their educators. So uh, sometimes, yes, they are referred to as America's students or our children, but we, we know who their rightful uh, parents are. So thank you for, again for your comments. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Okay, the chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. So motion. So second. motion, I have a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed?